Hello, everyone. I'm glad you're here today. Thank you for joining us for this session of Spokane Public Schools Keep Learning Series for Literacy. This lesson is intended for all our kindergarten students out there, but any child who is interested and wishes to join us is more than welcome to do so. My name is Ms. Sobchak, and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Holmes Elementary in Spokane Public Schools. I will be your teacher for today's session, and I'm so glad you're here participating with me today. If you haven't seen any of our previous lessons, you're still more than welcome to join us for today's. But you can find this lesson and all previously recorded lessons on the KSPS website. Today, we're gonna to read a book called Leo, the Late Bloomer. It's a story about a young tiger cub who couldn't do anything right. He doesn't seem to be able to do the same things his friends can do. While we're reading, we're gonna make connections. When you make connections, you use the information from the book and your schema or background knowledge. That's what you know and things that have happened to you. And you use those together to make meaning from the story. When you make connections, it helps you better understand the story. It helps you better relate with how the characters are feeling and understand why they're acting. For today's lesson, while I'm reading, all you'll need is your thinking cap and your great listening ears. But after I'm done, you're going to want a piece of paper and some crayons or markers. I'll give you a few seconds to gather your supplies. Great, let's get started. Leo the Late Bloomer by Robert Krauss, pictures by Jose Arugo. Leo couldn't do anything right. He couldn't read. He couldn't write. He couldn't draw. And he was a sloppy eater. And he never said a word. I have a connection to make. It seems like Leo is having a hard time, that all his friends can do the things that he can't do. I remember a time when I was learning to ride a bike and I could ride the bike, I could stay up and I had okay balance, but I couldn't go as fast as my friends and they seemed to have an easier time. I remember that it was hard for me and it didn't feel very good that all my friends were much faster and much better at riding their bike than I was. Have you ever had a time when something was hard for you, but maybe easier for your friends? What did that feel like? Did it make you feel sad or maybe frustrated? I wonder if that's the way Leo is feeling. That kind of helps me understand how he's feeling. He looks sad. I know I was sad and frustrated when I couldn't ride a bike as good as my friends could. That helps me better understand why Leo's just sitting there and not even trying. He's pretty frustrated and very sad. Does that help you understand how Leo is feeling? Let's keep reading to see what happens. What's the matter with Leo? Asked Leo's father. Nothing said Leo's mother. Leo is just a late bloomer. Better late than never, thought Leo's father. Every day, Leo's father watched him for signs of blooming. And every night, Leo's father watched him for signs of blooming. Are you sure Leo's a bloomer? Asked Leo's father. Patience, said Leo's mother. A watched bloomer doesn't bloom. So Leo's father watched TV instead. I have another connection to make. This time I have a connection to make with Leo's father. Have you ever had a time when you had to wait patiently for something? Leo's father is worried about Leo. He's seeing that he can't do the same things that his friends can do. 
But Leo's mother, she told Leo's father just to be patient. She's not worried. So Leo's father says he's not watching Leo, but he really is. He wasn't watching TV at all, was he? Have you ever had that happen? A time when you had to wait patiently for something? It's really hard, isn't it? I bet Leo's father is feeling a little bit worried or anxious or maybe even a little frustrated. I wonder if that's why he's saying he's not watching Leo when he really is, because he really wants it to happen right now. Does that help you better understand why Leo's father is acting the way he's acting and why and how he's feeling the way he's feeling? Let's keep reading to see what happens next. The snows came. Leo's father wasn't watching, but Leo still wasn't blooming. The trees budded. Leo's father wasn't watching, but Leo still wasn't blooming. Then one day in his own good time, Leo bloomed. He could read, he could write, and he could draw. Leo ate neatly. He also spoke, and it wasn't just a word, it was a whole sentence, and that sentence was, I made it. I have another connection to make. Leo finally made it. In the end, he could read and write and draw and eat neatly and speak, just like all his friends. You could tell by his smile how proud he must have been feeling. And all of his friends and his family were proud of him too. This makes me think of a time when I was learning how to do something that was hard. I wanted to learn how to swim and I had a goal. I wanted to swim all the way across the pool without stopping. It was really hard for me. I tried and I tried and it took me a long time. I even got a swim coach to help me and watched my other friends who could swim the length of the pool. And then one day I was able to do it. And I was so proud of myself and so excited. I leaned over to the friend swimming next to me and, say, and said, hey, look what I did. And she was happy for me too. I think this must be how Leo is feeling. Have you ever had a time when you worked really hard to do something? Maybe it was hard for you at first, but then you kept trying and one day you were able to do it? It's a good feeling, isn't it? When you work hard and then you can be very proud of yourself and usually the people around you are proud of you too. Does this help you better understand how Leo must be feeling? Let's go back and see if we can remind ourselves what happened in this story. How did it come that Leo bloomed? Let's go back and see if we can remember the different events in this story so we can figure out how Leo bloomed. At the beginning of the story, Leo couldn't do anything right. He was not very happy. Things were hard for him. All his friends seemed to be able to do things that he couldn't do. He couldn't read or write or draw. He was a sloppy eater and he never said a word. Leo's father was very worried about him, but Leo's mother said, be patient. A bloomer never blooms when he's watched. So Leo's father didn't watch Leo. Well, he said he didn't, but actually he watched Leo all the time. Then one day it happened. Leo bloomed. He could do all the things his friends could do. He could read and write and draw. He was not a sloppy eater anymore. He ate neatly and he even spoke his first words. Leo was proud of himself and his friends were proud of him too. And in the end, 
his father wasn't worried about him any more. So it seems that at the beginning of the book, Leo couldn't do everything that his friends can do. But then he bloomed and he could do everything that his friends could do. Do you know what that means to bloom? Have you ever seen a flower bloom? When something blooms, it grows and changes. I know that Leo bloomed throughout the book because he changed, he grew. The author never tells us why Leo bloomed. He never shows us what Leo did to be able to get better at things, to change and to grow. But I know some ways that kids can change and grow. And I wanna share those with you. I wonder if Leo was doing some of these things to help himself bloom. Let me show you. Let's talk about this. Let's talk. Why do you think Leo changed from the beginning of the book to the end? I know that sometimes when kids change, or even grown-ups maybe, it just takes time. Maybe there are things when you're younger that you can't do. Maybe you're not strong enough or tall enough or big enough. But then as you grow up, it gets easier. So maybe it just took time. Maybe all Leo needed to do to get better at everything was to give it some time and to grow up a little. I also know that sometimes when you want to change or grow or learn something new, you have to practice and practice and practice. Kind of like I did with my bike riding. It took me a lot of practice to become faster and stronger with my bike riding. Maybe Leo practiced learning how to read or learning how to write. Maybe he practiced his drawings or eating so that he wasn't such a sloppy eater. I also know that sometimes when you want to learn something, you ask somebody who already knows how to do it. You get a coach or a mentor, or you watch your friends who already know. Maybe Leo was watching his friends and that's how he learned. Or maybe he asked somebody to help him. Kind of like I did with my swimming when I got a swimming coach. That really helped me. I do know when something's hard, sometimes you just have to continue to work hard until it gets easier. Maybe that's what Leo did. Maybe he just continued to work hard. The author never tells us what Leo did to get better, to change, and to bloom. What do you think? Why do you think Leo changed? Every year we change and we grow, just like Leo did. Every year we bloom. This year in kindergarten, you bloom too. Can you think of something at the beginning of the year that you couldn't do or something that was hard for you? Can you think about something that's easy for you now? How were you able to bloom? Did you work hard? Did you practice and practice and practice? Or maybe you got help from your teacher and now something is easy for you that wasn't easy at the beginning? Let's think about the different ways you might have bloomed this year, just like Leo did. How have you bloomed this year? Are you better at listening and raising your hand? Maybe it was hard for you at the beginning of the year to take turns and you would blurt out answers, but now maybe you're really good at raising your hand and knowing to wait your turn. How about reading? Have you gotten better at reading this year? Maybe at the beginning of the year, you didn't know your letters or your letter sounds, but now you know them and you know a lot of words and you can read. Maybe just like Leo, you weren't very good at drawing or painting. And now with lots of practice, you are better at painting. You are better at drawing. Maybe now you're an artist. 
Maybe writing was hard for you at the beginning of the year. Maybe you didn't know how to make your letters or write your name, but now you're an author and you write stories after story after story. Maybe counting and math was hard for you at the beginning of the year. And now you're a mathematician. You know how to count. Maybe you can even count to 100. And you know your shapes and your colors. Maybe you've even started to do some addition and some subtraction. Maybe at the beginning of the year, you didn't know how to skip or hop on one foot. And maybe you've practiced that this year. And now you can do both of those things. You can skip across the field or hop on one foot and then switch feet. How have you bloomed this year? What was hard for you at the beginning of the year that's easy for you now? Today, you are going to draw and write about how you have bloomed this year. I'm going to show you what it might look like. You might want to start by drawing the grass and then make a circle for the center of a flower. You want lots of room. I'm sure there's lots of ways you have grown and changed and bloomed. So you're going to want lots of flowers in your garden. Then draw the petals all around. You can choose whatever color you want. Flowers have stems and leaves, so you'll want to add those too. Then right in the middle of your flower, you're gonna write how you've bloomed. Maybe you'll write, I can write my name. Is that something that was hard for you at the beginning, but now it's easy? Then you're gonna wanna add another flower, but this time, maybe you'll want it to look like a different flower. So you'll draw some triangles at the top, and a curved bottom. You'll want to add those leaves and stem again. And in the middle of this flower, you can write something different. Maybe you can write, I can count to 100. At the beginning of the year, did you have a hard time counting to 100? Maybe you could only count to 10. And now you can count all the way to 100 or maybe even higher. There's still room in your garden. You have bloomed in lots of ways. So you can add another flower. Start with the center. And then maybe this one will be very colorful. And you'll add petals that are all different colors. You'll want to add that stem and those leaves again. Maybe this time in this flower, you'll want to put something different in each petal. Maybe you can write, I can read or I am a good friend, or I know my numbers, or I can hop on one foot. I bet there are lots of ways that you have bloomed this year. I hope you are able to finish the drawing of your garden once this session is done. You should be proud of yourself. Look at all of the things that you have learned this year. Look at how you have grown and changed and bloomed. When you're done with your picture, don't forget to add your best coloring and then share it with somebody in your family. Celebrate with them all of the strides that you have made this year. I've enjoyed doing some literacy learning with you today. Thank you for joining me as you keep learning from home. I hope you have a great summer. Keep reading, stay active, and stay curious. Thank you.